On the fourth week of your course, we have discussed about types of function. And at that session, we also discussed about logarithmic and exponential function. So in this fifth week, we will discuss about the application of exponential function in economics. So let's just start. The Euler number or the number E point equals to 2.71828 is a preferred base for an exponential function. It offers a convenience when dealing with the derivative of an exponential function. Another application of this Euler number in economic is an interest compounding and the concept of growth. Now let's discuss about the application of the Euler number in interest compounding. Suppose we start out a principle of $1. We found a hypothetical banker to offer us the unusual interest rate of 100% per annum. If interest is to be compounded once a year, the value of our asset at the end of the year will be $2. We shall denote this value by V1, where the number in parentheses indicate the frequency of compounding within one year. So, V1 equals to initial principal times 1 plus the interest rate. And based on our hypothetical case, it will be as follow. So at the end of V1, the value of asset, our asset will equal to 2. This is obtained from the discrete interest compounding formula, which is as follow. If interest is compounded semi-annually, an interest accounting to 50% of principal will accrue at the end of six months. Thus, our year-end asset value V2 will be, at the first stage, at the end of the first six months, V1 is equal to 1 plus 50% because we assume the principal here is equal to 1. Or, at the end of the year, V2 is just equal to the principal of the, the value at the end of V1 becomes the principal for V2 times 1 plus 50%. Or, at the end of the year, V2, our value of money amount, this value. Or, by analogous reasoning, we can write, if compounded three times in a year, if compounded four times in a year, and so on. Or, in general, we can formulate the interest compounding in one year as follow, where m represents the frequency of compounding in one year. When interest is compounded continuously during the year, or when m becomes infinite, the value of the set will grow in a snowballing fashion. And at the end of year one, the value of our asset grows as follow. We use limit approach where m approaching to infinite because if interest is compounded continuously, we can say it is compounded many times approaching infinite. And equation two, using limit m approaching to infinite will result the E number. Thus, the E number, E equals to 2.71828, can be interpreted as the year-end value to which a principal of $1 will grow if interest at the rate of 100% per annum is compounded continuously. Note that the interest rate of 100% is only a nominal interest rate, or if $1 becomes $E or $2.718 after one year, the effective interest rate is the case approximately 172% per annum. Now let's try to construct the continuous interest compounding formula in general. With an initial principle of $A to be invested for T years, at a nominal interest rate of R, the compound interest rate formula must be modified to the formula to this form as follow. 
The quotient expression Rm means that in each of the m compounding periods in a year, only 1 over m of the nominal rate R will actually be applicable. The exponent mt tells us that since interest is to be compounded m times a year, there should be a total of mt compoundings in t years. Formula 3 from the previous slide can be transformed into an alternative form by multiplying the exponent with r over r. And we get this formula. With some rearrangement, we get this formula. And remember, this part is equivalent with equation 2 before. Thus, we can replace with the, no with the e number and obtain this formula. To sum up, from the hypothetical case, we can make a generalized case. We get the general formula for continuous interest compounding as follow. So we start with the hypothetical case and we can um, modify the principle, the nominal rate, the years of continuous com compounding and our principle. Or, or I, I mean the end of the asset value, and this would be the general formula of continuous interest compounding. So let's see the application of the formula that we just have obtained. Let's say that we have $70 as our principal, which is invested with the interest rate of 4% per annum, and it is compounded continuously for three years. In other words, we are planning to invest for three years. So what is the value of our money at the year at the end of year three? Uh, using the formula, the continuous interest compounding formula, we have the A is equal to 70, the R, the interest rate is 0.04, and the period of compounding is for three years. So with, using your calculator, you will know that at the end of year three, the amount of principal which was before $70 will grow becoming $78.925. In a compound interest problem, we seek to compute the future value V from a given present value A. The problem of discounting is the opposite. Finding the present value A of a given sum V, which is to be available T years from now. So from discrete compounding interest rate, we have this formula. Thus, the discounting formula, or if we want to know the amount of our present value money, is using this formula, or equal to V times 1 plus I powered by minus t. Similarly, for the continuous case, where the, the formula is given as follow, the discounting formula is A equals to V over ERT, or equals to V times E powered by E, powered by minus RT. Another application of logarithma and exponential function is for finding the doubling time. Let's say we have the rate of growth is i, and initial number is a, and it follows a discrete growth. Based on the condition, we use the discrete growth formula and set that the n value is 2a. Cancel out a from both sides. We do this by dividing both sides with A, and we get this end result. This is the formula to find the time needed for a variable to double with a certain rate of growth. Let's see an example. If the growth rate is 4.5%, then how long does it need for a variable to double? So we just plug in the numbers to the formula we just obtained where 4.5% is just equal to 0 0.045 equals to this result and 
we know that we can transform exponential function into log function and obtain using a calculator the amount time needed for the variable to double is 15.75 years.